Hi, everyone, and welcome to today's webcast, Be Your Community's Career Development Anchor, brought to you by Library Journal and sponsored by Gell, a Cengage company. My name is Joshua Bean with Library Journal, and I'll be your moderator. But before we begin, let's go over a few housekeeping items. Your screen is completely customizable. You can resize any of the windows and move them around, so feel free to adjust as needed to get the most out of your desktop space. If you accidentally close any of your windows, you can bring them back up by clicking on the appropriate widget down at the bottom of your screen. If you have any questions for our presenters during the webcast, you can submit them through the Q&A window at any time, and we'll address those at the end of the webcast. A copy of today's slide deck is available in the download, for download in the resource list window, and you'll be able to download your CE certificate from the certification window once you've met the viewing requirements. You can also tweet us at Library Journal with the hashtag, hashtag LJGaleCD. And if you're experiencing any technical difficulties, you can click on the help widget where you can find system requirements and FAQs. And if that doesn't resolve your issue, you can send a note through the Q&A window. Okay, uh, now I'd like to introduce our presenters. Uh, first up we have Kim Montagnol, e-curriculum specialist and data analyst at Howard County Library System. And we have Catherine Trochelle, business librarian at Enoch Pratt Free Library. And from Gale, we have project managers, Angela Doolin and Kristen Foost. All right, with those intros out of the way, uh, I'll uh, hand things off to Angela to begin today's presentation. Take it away, Angela. Thanks, Josh, and hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. In these unprecedented times of layoffs and furloughs, job seekers and workers are looking for ways to ensure employability and evolve their career paths. As recently as October 15th, nearly 65% of American workers said they were afraid of becoming unemployed, while 40% believed they would need more education to replace a lost job according to Estrada Center Public Viewpoint COVID-19 Work and Education Survey. Unfortunately, a lot of these folks don't know where to start. Enter the Public Library, a long-standing trusted institution that plays an active role in supporting their community's workforce development needs. In a nationwide survey of state library staff and interviews with local library staff, conducted by the John J. Heldrich Center for Workforce Development at Rutgers University, they found that 75% of survey respondents reported that libraries in their state provide career services. Now, this isn't surprising as many libraries include workforce development as part of their mission statements and strategic plans. We know that it's just that important. When you registered for this webcast, you answered a few survey questions about workforce development at your libraries. We'd like to share the findings. 74% of respondents said workforce development was a priority at their library. What types of workforce development services does your library offer? As you can see, most of you, 84%, offer digital resources with resume and cover letter help, which is not a big surprise and about half offer online skills development and job search and application support. Are you seeing an increase in demand for your workforce development services? 21% of you found no increase, 61% saw a small increase, 14% saw a moder moderate increase and 4% are seeing a large increase. So now we're going to hand things off to our outstanding panelists who are here to tell us about how they've been working with job seekers. Hi, everybody. My name is Kim Montagnol, and I am the e-curriculum specialist and data analyst at Howard County Library System in Maryland. Um, I know that that is a very long and complex job title, so I wanted to give you a visual summary of what I do at Howard County. I am first and foremost a selector. Um, I'm responsible for several collections, but my primary uh, collection is the digital collection. So I select all of the research databases, um, the streaming platforms, 
the ebook platforms. I do all of that. And as you can imagine, I work with a lot of different vendors. Um, I am also uh, a troubleshooter. I spend a lot of my spare time troubleshooting. I help our staff um, with particularly sticky questions um, with, with whenever they're confused about a feature upgrade or an interface change. Um, and I also directly help our patrons whenever they have particularly sticky issues with ebooks or authenticating to some of our databases. And my last area of responsibility is I also uh, am an internal liaison between our materials management department and our PR team. Howard County Library System has an entire full-time team of people who do public relations and communications for us. And I am not on that team, but I do um, liaise with them and I help them decide what aspects of the collection to promote. And we're going to get to more of what I do in that area um, later in this presentation. I also wanted to show you some fast facts about our library system. Um, every single library and every community is different, and I think it's important to be transparent with you about where we are and who we are. Um, Howard County is actually the smallest geographic county in the state of Maryland, but we are fairly densely populated. We have six different branches that serve the public, um, a little bit more than 300 staff members. And um, you can see our median household income there is high. Um, we are among the top household incomes in the country, um, but that is not unusual for the DC metropolitan area. Uh, many of the top median incomes are in the DC area. So we have a lot of high earning dual income families, um, but I don't know how the pandemic has changed this um, as this number is a couple years old. Um, so that is um, who we are and where we are. And I also wanted to show you where we're at in this COVID journey. Um, I know every library and system is a little bit different. I'm not gonna read this slide to you verbatim, but the important takeaway here is that we closed all of our branches to the public on Monday, March 16th, and we've never reopened. Um, we did launch contactless pickup service to the community in June, um, but that is all we're doing right now. We are not open for computer appointments or shelf browsing. Um, we have been serving our community remotely through phone, email, and chat reference. So with that in mind, everything that I'm going to be presenting to you about today is um, initiatives that we've done remotely and digitally. Um, so I also wanted to share with you how I approached this. Um, in the spring, when we closed, we knew that workforce development would be very top of mind as we saw a lot of furloughs, a lot of layoffs, a lot of anxiety and uncertainty. And we knew it was important that we get ahead of this and, and really, um, help the community find what they needed. So I sat down and I brainstormed a three-step plan and this is because I'm a very linear thinker and this is exactly the steps that I took starting in the spring. So today I'm gonna give you six tips for uh, how I executed this plan. And my first tip, if you haven't already done so, is to evaluate all of your free local resources um, that are available in your backyard. Here are some examples. Uh, hopefully you have a local workforce development office. If you don't, I'm sure you have some type of chamber of commerce. Uh, if you are in a community that has a community college or a local four-year um, university, they often have career centers um, that are hugely helpful. And I found our state's Department of Labor website to be a treasure trove of information. Uh, that chart that you see on the screen is actually um, a screenshot from our state's Department of Labor website. And 
if you go there, that chart is endless. You can just keep scrolling down. And I counted more than 100 different employers who are hiring in the state of Maryland. And I wanted to mention to you that all of these organizations should have a social media presence. Um, your library can follow them on social media and share their posts. Uh, if you don't have social media authority for your library, you can personally follow these organizations and share their posts through your personal page. Or the best thing to do really is to tell patrons to follow all of these organizations on social media and they will be the first to know about news and job opportunities. Um, I was actually quite surprised. I was on the Howard County Chamber of Commerce's website and I had always thought about it as a business to business networking organization, but they did have some jo seasonal job opportunities listed and they did um, push that out through social media. So it's important to be aware of that. And it's a really great resource um, to steer your patrons towards. And once you've surveyed um, what you've got that's free and local, it's always a good idea to take stock of what your library already has. And on this slide, I put a bunch of logos of different products. And it's important to note that this slide is not comprehensive. Um, I might have left off a few products. I might have included a few products that surprise you. Um, Howard County Library System does not have all of these products, <laughs> um, but we have some of them and some of them are their competitors. And one thing that I wanted to point out that it seems kind of obvious, but I think it's a disconnect, is that a lot of these products don't have the word job or career or workforce in their name. Um, and this is confusing to patrons, uh, especially when they have such a large and overwhelming need to either find a new job, change careers, or upskill, they're, they're laser focused on, you know, what can help me and what can help me now. And they're not gonna be like, clearly A to Z databases can help me find a job. Um, that's, that's, the name sort of doesn't reflect the content there. And I wanted to talk about this a little bit because not only is it confusing to your patrons, but um, I've actually had some internal staff and management be confused and they've approached me and they've asked me for a summary of what we offer to job seekers and upskillers and career changers because they're not quite sure. So um, it, it would really benefit you to take, you know, even 20 minutes and just go through what you've got and how it can help job seekers. Um, in particular, I'd like to point out regular brain fuse. Um, our amazing children's librarians are familiar with this and they push it a lot to students, you know, who are learning virtually or in a hybrid environment right now. And they're not as aware of the fact that they also offer resume review. Um, so it's there, you just have to go looking for it and do an inventory of what your library is already paying for that can help people who are really in need in this area. And so once you've surveyed what's free and local and what you're already paying for, I think you'll have a better idea of what you need in this space, where your gaps are. And I recommend asking vendors that you know and trust and already work with. Um, these are seven questions that I like to ask vendors that I work with. Um, I learn something new every single time I ask a vendor one or more of these questions. Um, if you don't have a direct line of communication with your library's vendors, please find the person at your library who does. Um, see if that person can help you promote some of these products with pre-written vendor copy. Or you can ask that person at your library if they've considered adding any new products to your digital collection. Um, and feel free to share any or all of these questions with that person at your library if you think it could help them. 
And my next tip is a little bit of a loaded topic. Um, I think this pandemic has made all of us more acutely aware of the shortcomings of our library's websites. And Howard County Library System is no exception. Um, our website is four and a half years old. That's very old. And we were starting to think about a redesign even before the pandemic. But obviously this pandemic has pushed that higher up our priority list. Um, once you do the survey of what's free and local and what you're paying for, you need to make it really easy for your patrons to find those things. And um, here's a screenshot of our website. And I know it's small and a little bit blurry, but I wanted to point out where I have that red arrow on your screen. We added a navigation bar of just COVID-19 information. And I know you can't read those links, but it takes patrons directly to business resources for small businesses, um, food access, utilities and housing information. And the last link that I've circled that's really hard to read says unemployment. And when patrons click on that link, it takes them directly to how to, how to apply for unemployment, but also where they can search for jobs and all of the products that we pay for that can help them with resume templates, practice interviews, upskilling, career changing. It takes them right there directly. It took us less than a week to add this to our website and um, the benefits are enormous. I think you'll see a lot um, I think you'll see your usage go up if you link it directly from the home page, and it's what people are looking for right now. And my fifth tip is to partner with your community. Um, one of the things that we did was we invited a guest speaker from a local four-year university near us. Um, this is a screenshot uh, of one of our events. This happened last night. And we invited Rachel Bachman from the University of Maryland, Baltimore County's Career Center. She gave an excellent Zoom presentation um, on creating resumes that recruiters recognize. And we're so grateful to Rachel that she was able to do this for us. And she's also got more sessions planned. We're partnering with her in December for a session called Build Your LinkedIn and Social Media Profile. And she's doing a third session for us in January called Mastering the Elevator Pitch and Interview. And it's a really, really great way to connect our patrons with experts in this area. Um, it really takes the pressure off of us and it allows us to help more people get more targeted advice. Um, another thing that we've done um, is we give guest talks whenever invited. Um, I was invited in May to speak to a group of seniors in our community. Uh, they call themselves the Encore Careerists. And, and ever since before the pandemic, they were looking for fulfilling part-time work after retiring from their primary career. And they approached the library system in the spring and they asked how, you know, what resources we had that could help them. So I did a 20 minute phone call um, with the group leader to see um, exactly what resources we had that would be of use to this group. And then I tailored a one hour Zoom session to, to fit their needs. And we covered several things during this session. Um, I spent most of my time screen sharing and I showed them exactly how to use A to Z databases. And in particularly, I showed them how to search by zip code for local organizations in Howard County who might be hiring or who would be potentially open to needing consultants. And I also covered newspaper databases and I helped show this group how to use our newspaper databases to search for local Maryland business news and developments in the business area. And they were super sharp, super engaged. They asked great questions. And as a result, um, we really saw our database usage skyrocket. Um, I can attribute 
the increase in usage solely to that group, but um, they've certainly helped push usage higher. And I'm so glad to see that, you know, they could take advantage of something that we have and pay for to help them as they figure out what to do next. And then the last tip I have for you is actually the easiest part. Um, you've already done all of the hard work of finding the tools, and now you just have to publicize them. And we do a lot of things in this area. And I'm just gonna speak quickly about a few. Um, our PR and communications team revived our weekly e-newsletter. Um, we had had one years ago. We didn't, we weren't really publishing it, but uh, when the pandemic hit and our buildings closed, we decided to revive this. And we pushed this out every Saturday morning via Sendy to over 60,000 of our patrons. Um, this is a collaborative group effort. And I am one of several contributors. So, and it covers everything the library's done over the course of the week and kind of what's coming up, any virtual programs that we've got coming up, any new initiatives and news that we wanna highlight. And every week, I do this every single week, I make sure to contribute um, a piece to the weekly e-blast. And I usually highlight databases um, since we are close to the public. I like to tell people about what we've got on our website, what's free, what they can use from home. Um, but sometimes I do um, push out book lists if they're topical and I think they could be helpful. Um, Sometimes I write original copy for this, but a lot of times I don't have time. So that's when I lean on my vendors and I ask them if they have any pre-written copy that I can use and I can just paste it in there um, with minor tweaks. Uh, I did want to point out that patrons really love visuals. So if you can share screenshots, um, that would be helpful. If you've already filmed any virtual demonstrations of products, this would be a great place to reuse them. Um, patrons love step-by-step. -step. Um, if you have anything like Niche Academy, you can drop that those tutorial links in here. Um, and also any pre-designed images from your vendors um, are also very appealing if you can't do screenshots or videos. Um, and if you're gonna spend the time uh, contributing something like this, like long copy to a newsletter, I think you should get a lot of mileage out of it. I take these newsletter pieces um, and I adapt them into blog posts. And I also make them super short and punchy for social media. So every week I make sure that I contribute to our weekly e-newsletter and I shorten it for a Sunday social media post. And then I blog once or twice a month on longer topics that need more explanation. And then just a quick note about promotion. Um, because I work with such a large, engaged and passionate team, I have a personal rule that I never promote a product without first telling my team at Howard County Library System. Um, it's really not, I, I make sure that I tell them because sometimes we get a lot of questions uh, from our community and patrons about what we publish in this newsletter. And I don't want our branch staff to be surprised that they're getting a lot of questions um, about a resume wizard or about brain fuse. So I make sure to give them a heads up about what I promote every week so that everyone is on the same page and we can all help our community, especially if they have questions. And then the last thing I wanted to share with you is actually a testimonial from one of our patrons. Um, patron Chris wrote to us, he is unemployed and he is especially thanking us for lynda.com. Um, he's found such value in all of the free video classes there and he's blown away by how easy and free it is to use Linda to upskill. And um, this was very touching. It sort of makes all of the hard work that we do worth it. And so I, I hope this inspires you too. Um, 
But that's all I have for you today. Um, please feel free to contact me. There's a lot of people on this webinar today. And if I don't get to your question in the chat, I'd love to hear from you via email. So thank you very, very much to Gail and Library Journal. And thank you to everyone today. Really good tips, Kim. Thank you. So my name is Katie Trochel. Um, I'm the business librarian at Enoch Pratt Free Library in Baltimore, Maryland. Um, we are fortunate enough to also have a workforce librarian that I work closely with um, when we're both in the building, who I believe is attending this. I won't call her out, but I will share some of the great work that she does. Um, this is our central branch. We have a total of 22 branches throughout the city, and we have a mobile job center as well, and a couple bookmobiles that go around. We are located in the heart of Mount Vernon, and we actually started when Enoch Pratt um, in 1886 um, wanted to create a free library for the public of Baltimore um, distinctly for everybody, um, no matter what their race um, and income level. And he was kind of a bit of a bootstrapper himself and business owner and never went to college. So for him, he really wanted to create a place where the public, if they wanted to, could improve their lives throughout. Um, and in addition to being the public library for Baltimore City, we are also here at um, Central, the State Library Resource Center. And what that means is we train librarians throughout the state in different things from legal reference, um, the reference interviews, starting a business, anything that they could help the public with. And we've been doing that. We've been doing webinars um, and self-guided lessons as well. We train um, library associates who want to work at Maryland libraries uh, throughout the state as well. And so we've continued to provide those services. And then this is just a little flashback to the 30s when we supported workers through the Works Progress Administration. Um, they're finding some of our books there. And just a little aside, if you want really cool vintage library photos, uh, check out Digital Maryland, and they always tell you where you can find um, the email address to get permission to use those photos too. This is the inside of Central Hall now. I just wanted to give to show it to you because um, currently in this huge cavernous hall, um, we are letting people in for computer appointments. So they book computer appointments with it and we are limiting it to about 14 people at the moment. And in addition to this, we're providing sidewalk service. So if people wanna pick up holds, we are currently loaning out hotspots um, and we are waiting for our Chromebooks to come in because there is a great need in our community for people to be connected. Um, so we will have those soon to be able to loan out. Um, so we're offering computer appointments at three of our locations. There are largest locations that we know that we can spread out enough. And then what our staff is doing is we are alternating weeks that we are on site. So this week I am on site. So you can see um, this is actually the job and career center that I am in right now. Oop, too far. Okay, so our immediate response to COVID was, how can we take the services we currently provide and continue to provide them and what medium? Um, and then we also saw there was a lot of new information coming out, whether it was for business or job seekers, um, tax information as well that people needed to know about now. So we created a couple web guides and what we did also was um, kind of Back to what Kim said is we've already created the materials, so we would do live tutorials online and stream it through Facebook Live, and that way people could either watch it live or come back and watch it another time, and we're able to hit them through a couple different avenues um, through there. And you can still check those out on our website, prattlibrary.org, if you want to spy on them. Um, we're continuing to provide classes and guidance um, for other librarians throughout the state and training through that. Um, just like we have been, the attendance has definitely grown quite a bit as many of us are at home and trying to continue learning. We continue to communicate with your partners, um, such as like for me, the Small Business Development Center. And I've noticed there's kind of a, especially when it first started, a lot of these partners were coming to us to see how we provided virtual services and how we would do classes and how we engage with people 
because it was new for all of us, but we were already kind of familiar with doing those online classes there too. Um, and then we've adapted many of our programs and services to be able to provide them online, including like the very popular lawyer in the library. Um, we do have a full-time social worker on staff, which is amazing. Um, and you can contact them anytime um, through phone or email. Of course, we're doing live chat and then we're doing virtual computer training, whether you're learning basic office skills or trying to create a brochure, um, we got you. In addition, our mobile job center just went back on the road, yay. Um, some of the other contact-free services we're doing is we're boosting our community Wi-Fi. And especially in Baltimore, um, the digital divide is a big thing. And we people really need that access to fast internet. So at eight of our branches, we've boosted the Wi-Fi signal um, so that people can pull up with their cars and park and you see people with their laptops getting their work done um, to connect to that. In addition, we have our mobile job center is five days a week, 10 to three at um, Cherry Hill Shopping Center, which we chose this location because a traffic for the shopping center. And when we looked at the statistics, we found that um, this area had not a lot of people were connected to the internet and they had very high unemployment rates. So we really found the need here. And in addition, we've boosted the antennas on our bookmobiles, um, which are the bright red ones. And they go around um, on a schedule traveling to different areas that, ha again, have that need for Wi-Fi service. Um, and I don't know if it's big enough for you to see, but we do try to make the sign very big so that people know how to connect to us. Um, and I believe you can connect up to 65 devices on those at a time. Um, and with the Mobile Job Center, we're also waiting on those Chromebooks, and they are planning on setting up tables so that people can come work on their resumes. And they also provide resume templates, so somebody could just simply fill out a packet, and then that can feed into their beautiful print resume that we can either email them, and we are providing mail service to Baltimore City residents, so we will snail mail it as well if that's what they like. Okay, and then here's what our wonderful workforce librarian has been up to. Um, programs and guidance, she has done several classes on virtual interviewing, um, networking, and how to do that all through the internet. And she has done resume reviews either via email. Um, she's also done phone consultations to help people. And um, we do have a series of computer classes, the work place readiness workshops. And that's a series that will really just treat you, teach you all of the elements of office. So if you're preparing for a job in an office, you would be able to use PowerPoint, Excel um, at quite a competent level. And that way you're kind of with other job seekers as well, going through the same series of classes. And then the Job Seekers Toolkit, I really wanted to highlight because she did such a good job on it. Um, you can also just Google Pratt Library Toolkit and it comes right up. Um, so I have, I'm have i just showing you the different categories, um, different sections of this that she breaks it down into the different stages of where you might be in your job search and the planning and researching like that starts with how to set up an email address. And then it breaks it down more and more to find those details, like how to research a career. And you see some wonderful community partners here listed, um, and also how to like research the industry you're looking in, which can be really insightful for how are they doing in this economy. Okay, and then as the business librarian, I want you to maybe think about adding a little entrepreneurial services to your work um, workforce services that you provide. Because cert, um, recently we've been seeing several people have been leaving voluntarily. Um, unemployment rates luckily are a little bit better than they were, but September showed that over 1 million people actually voluntarily left their places of employment. And when I tell you, 
it's 80% female. You can probably guess it has to do with childcare or other services, but people are also leaving based on whether they're not feeling safe at their workplace um, and looking at other avenues to work besides if they are let go too. Um, and today more than ever, there are so many opportunities to just have a side hustle or sell something on Etsy that people are really looking for this information now. I call it micropreneurship. Um, solopreneur is another term used, the sharing economy, side hustles, content creators. If you're making money on the side, uh, people need to know what to do with it and also how to maximize your business and do well with it. So, and encouraging the entrepreneurial mindset, I think even if you're not looking to open a small business, um, even as librarians to continue to develop, these are great skills, especially for job seekers um, to kind of build a little autonomy um, within their career too. So micro learning in a variety of formats and, you know, can be the traditional avenues of books and everything, but things are changing so quickly that I find great marketing tips through like TikTok or Reddit sometimes. And if it works, it works. Um, and if it gets the message across, why not? Strategic planning, but also be willing to fail fast and fail forward. Um, you, you won't know until you try. You can learn by it. People are usually pretty forgiving, especially with programming um, on the virtual setting. We all know what it's like. So being willing to take those risks, try something new, especially if you're an entrepreneur, um, you may be solving a customer's problem that nobody has ever thought to solve before. And also, of course, building technical and research skills. There's so many opportunities and we'll go through some to learn online that you can be on certifications, you can develop your skills to make yourself more employable or develop your skills to maximize your business as well. Okay, and then some of the programs we've had recently, um, specifically for small business, is I did one last week, Navigating the Gig Economy. And this one I decided, um, it was a 30 minute program and we did it through Zoom and we streamed it live through Facebook. Um, and I made it a little shorter because I thought more people would watch it. And it did get a lot more views than the other um, business programs because I kept it to under 30 minutes. So I think even after it was posted, more people were willing to sit through that and learn from it too. And then teen entrepreneurs, and this was a program we started planning um, probably February. So of course we were planning on doing it in person. We were gonna do a teen entrepreneur camp. We actually have a wonderful teen section with a maker space here. We were gonna have them create stuff. We were gonna do business pitches, a whole pitch competition, but that kind of went out the window a little bit, but we still wanted to give them these skills um, and develop that mindset at a young age that yes, you can be a business owner. So many people think of entrepreneurs as being like Steve Jobs or for huge corporations, but there are so many other ways that you can have your own business and earn an income, whether it's a couple hundred dollars or your entire income too. Um, so really developing those skills in teens and, you know, they're already digital natives. They, they get everything. They're super quick. And a couple of things I used for that is I used like Padlet so that I could throw all the resources I gave them in one place to share with them. And then that one, we wanted a more casual setting. So we ended up using Google Hangouts just because it was easier for everybody. And then this is a really exciting new program that we're doing. Um, in Baltimore, there's a lower level of educational attainment than we would like to see. So we created this with Gail. Um, we signed up for it with them, I should say, to earn, you can earn your high school diploma completely online. This is open to people in ages 19 and older, and they do need to apply and be Baltimore City residents. And this is a fully accredited degree. It is not a GED. It's a full degree. Um, and if somebody does have some high school credits, they will transfer it to, and it is, yes, it's a fully accredited program too. And it's been quite popular. We're um, just about to start our first cohort and it's about 75% full um, as we speak now.
And then with that, they also get career certificates um, that they can specialize to make them even more employable. And everybody who goes through this high school program will get a career portfolio. So they will have their resume, they will have their cover letter, and they will be able to speak confidently about what they can bring to a job as well too. Yeah, and we're finding, um, and in our survey that we gave people and made them fill out to sign up, I should say, um, many of them, wanted this because they wanted to get a promotion, they wanted a better job, and then um, the third largest category was personal fulfillment. This is something they've always wanted and they're ready to take that step now. And then again, of course, this was last year when we were able to meet in person. This is Entrepreneur Academy. This was in partnership with the um, Urban Libraries Council and uh, Baltimore County Public Library. Baltimore County is all around Baltimore City. Um, so they did their own cohort, we did ours, but when we, during COVID, when we took it virtual, um, we combined the cohorts and we had, I think like 125 people sign up in two hours, then we had to shut it down because that was too many. Um, and this is a seven week series of classes that will take them from everything from ideation to business planning. Um, we will bring in experts to talk about their taxes. We have a lawyer come in as well. And then we also definitely have them do their elevator pitch as well. Um, and then because it's virtual, the format's a little different. We used to meet once a week. Now we're meeting two times a week. One time is optional. And that's more of a the kind of fun networking than we'll think of something fun to go over um, and discuss with them. Like when I was showing them Facebook ads and how to spy on other companies and see the kind of reach they're getting. And then so for us, for professional development, um, I definitely recommend reaching out to your database representative. I don't know, if, you know, I love attending other programs too that other libraries are doing. I will spy on other libraries' websites. And I think, I don't know if that's my market research business librarian slant or just good practice um, to see what other libraries are offering and how to reach them as well too. Um, absolutely promote your programs to local chambers of commerce and workforce development groups. Um, keep those connections, build that list too. I also create search alerts um, through Google and sometimes I do them through the Gale products because you can create them there too. And that way the data is coming to me, which I really like. And you can be very specific with your keywords and if something pops up, wonderful. And then I also, you have to kind of rethink the usual process and how we typically run programs. Um, so again, maybe they don't need to be an hour long and in this format, maybe a more casual gathering is the way to go depending on what you're trying to do. And the typical registration may not work, whereas people may wanna passively watch it on their own time. Um, and I think it's really important to keep interacting with colleagues beyond webinars. I just went to the Entrepreneurship and Libraries Conference last week, and we were all like, you know, adding each other to LinkedIn like crazy. Feel free to add me. That's fine. There's also Facebook groups. There's Twitter that are really great ways to um, get a broader perspective of librarianship in the U.S. and what services we are offering. And then here are a few, few of the business favorites um, for databases that I use. Let me see my notes I wrote. Um, so the business plan builder is a big one and I'll show you more details of that later because a lot of people just don't know where to get started with that. And this makes it very easy to just kind of fill in the blanks and it will give you guided steps along the way. Gail eBooks, we, they have fantastic books on job seeking, but also you can look up company histories and um, business plans. So if somebody wants to see a sample business plan, they can. And for the business plans handbook, we have the text and they come out with a new volume like every single year. They're very thick, they're very heavy. A benefit of the database is you can search, like you can search fitness if they're looking for a fitness industry and find information about that industry too. Um, and then I'll use like company histories. When I did the teen entrepreneur camp, I gave them an example of Beats by Dre headphones, the company history, because it really showed you the process of 
idea development, how they advertised it, why they were able to corner this market, et cetera. Um, Gale courses and Udemy are excellent for continued professional development. Udemy especially is very technical. Um, you can get some of them offer certifications as well to definitely build your resume and repertoire there. Um, and then Gale One File Business, I found helpful for finding very timely business information because dated so um, so much that you can search like COVID and restaurants and you'll be able to immediately get results for that. Whereas for a book, you know, they're just not out yet to find that. And then here's just a little snippet of this small business builder. Um, along the way, you see it says guide me. You can have it walk you through it. It links with their other products. So it will define some of the terms. If you don't know what like a break even analysis is, they'll define that for you as well as walking you through it. And um, even for somebody working on their career, doing like a lean model canvas can be really beneficial because it's just a one page with I think like 10 little squares that you fill in and it gives you a really complete picture of who you are and what you have to offer to and what problems you're able to solve. Um, and again, it goes from everything. You can do a break even analysis. You can create different scenarios. If you're like, should I take my business in this direction or this one? What makes most sense? Um, and again, guiding you along the way throughout that. And then of course the financial projections are very helpful too. And a lot of people really do, you know, when they're not everybody's a business major. Um, who starts a business. So this is a great way for somebody who doesn't have that business background to bring their great idea to fruition. Oh, and what's great is it will also, you can like download like the complete reports and it looks all pretty and it's formatted lovely. Um, and then Gale Legal Forms, we also subscribe to, and they are, people are always looking for like, you know, I need to, child custody agreement, things like that, um, employment law. And you can find this on here as well. They will define different legal terms in plain English so that it's easy to understand. And for small businesses, they have a startup package. They have a couple different packages, but they have a small business startup package that will kind of have like everything complete in there, um, as well as frequently asked questions that you can find. And most of these you can actually download and edit to suit your needs. Um, so whether or not that's for business, that is that. And of course you can feel free to contact me um, at, if you don't feel like spelling my last name, you can also do bc at prattlibrary.org for business center, or you can spell all of that out and let me know if you have any additional questions. Thank you. Angela, are you on the line still? I am. I did the thing where I started talking and I was muted. Oh, okay. uh, they warned us about that. <laughs> Um, hi, everyone. I'm Angela Doolin, and thanks so much to Kim and Katie, our wonderful panelists, for um, telling us how they engage with their job seeker community and um, and uh, help folks who are trying to uh, move ahead in their careers. Uh, so here today, I'm going to tell you a little bit about one of our newer learning resources, Gail Presents You to Me, which uh, Katie mentioned during her presentation. Um, I don't need to tell you all the ways in which the COVID-19 pandemic has disrupted our lives, but this time is also providing um, an opportunity to reflect on what we really want for those lives, including our careers where we spend most of our waking hours. So Gail Presents You to Me is an, uh, an online um, marketplace where uh, folks who are looking to make a career change or build their skills uh, can come and take more than 7,000 top rated courses across 75 categories, many of them focused on business, technology, 
leadership, and other dimensions of self-improvement. While Gail Presents Udemy is aimed at current and aspiring professionals, um, it can also be used with a lot of different kinds of patrons, students, entrepreneurs, um, folks who are looking for work, anyone who's looking to qualify for a credential, and new Americans. And as I mentioned earlier, Gill Presents Udemy has courses in a strong, uh, broad variety of areas. Among the most popular of these are those that cover the hard skills, everything from software development and coding to finance and accounting. But as we all know, hard skills aren't everything. This resource also offers a breadth and depth of soft skill courses, um, courses that will help build skills that make job candidates stand out from the crowd, including leadership, negotiation, public speaking, and more. And while job skills are an important focus for many, especially during these turbulent times, it's important for all of us to take a look inward and um, take care of ourselves and our loved ones. Uh, so Gail Presents Udemy also provides a range of personal enrichment classes that can help your patrons manage their stress and enhance their well-being. All right, so the content is excellent, but what else is cool about this resource? Um, I mentioned New Americans earlier. Uh, Gail Presents Udemy offers a growing collection of more than 2,000 courses delivered by native speakers of Spanish, French, German, Portuguese, and Japanese, which uh, extends your reach as a library. In addition, over 90% of courses come with captions and um, transcripts, and many are uh, offered not only in English, but in other languages as well. Patrons can preview a course before enrolling in it so they can see whether it's a good fit for them. They can also filter on criteria such as level, rating, language, duration, and more to find courses that are just right for their needs. But they don't have to navigate all this content alone. Based on their course enrollments, Gale Presents Udemy will present suggestions and related courses for further learning. Um, another cool thing about Gale Presents Udemy is that all of the courses that are part of the collection are driven there by ratings and reviews by other learners. So um, people can, your patrons can review the, the comments that have been left and the ratings, the star ratings, um, to see whether something is going to fit with their particular learning style. Um, and they can also leave their own ratings and reviews. And those ratings and reviews get included in your usage reports so that you can see the impact that these courses are having on your community. And so with all of that, um, I will turn things over to my colleague, Kristen Foos, to tell you a little bit about our Peterson's products. Thanks, Kristen, Angela. are you there? Yes. Hi, everyone. My name is Kristen Foost and I'm a product manager here at Gale. Wanted to let you all know about a brand new product that we launched this summer. titled Gale Presents Peterson's Career Prep. If you're familiar with Gale's Testing and Education Reference Center, um, this new offering essentially pulls out a lot of those career tools and puts them into a standalone database that offers more, more focus on um, the job and career tools specifically. <clears throat> career prep is offered through a partnership with Gail and Peterson, an education and test prep company, and is focused on helping your patrons navigate today's job market. Career prep gives you a way to support multiple job seeker needs in a single resource with features including a resume and cover letter creator, a job search tool, career information overviews, and lots of great content containing advice and best practices for pursuing employment. The product is mobile res responsive and is supported by Gale's multiple authentication methods, so your patrons can access the resource even if your library remains physically closed. 
This product also supports a wide range of prospective job seekers, from new graduates or other people entering the workforce for the first time, to people who might be more interested in a career change or who are seeking reemployment after a period of unemployment. I'm gonna to touch on just a few of the core features. One offering within this tool is the Visual CV Resume Creator, which connects your patrons with beautifully pre-built templates that are sure to catch the eye of potential employer. Your patrons can even create simple websites that can then be externally shared. And there's a dashboard that allows them to view um, how often those websites have been accessed or viewed by prospective employers. Different editing options within the tool present a simpler form view for more novice users, while more technologically advanced users can take advantage of different customization options. For users creating a resume for the first time, several resume examples are provided across varying industries and experience levels. The Pathway U Career Assessment helps patrons learn more about different jobs and career fields. What's great about this tool is that it's highly personalized to users' interests and skill level. So after taking some individual assessments geared toward identifying the user's job preferences, they're then presented with career recommendations that they might be well-suited for and enjoy. Your users can also opt to search across all career types, as well as search for active job listings thanks to an integration with Indeed.com. Each career page contains detailed information on the job itself, with many of the overviews including videos. Military crosswalks are also available for veterans who are looking to translate their skills to civilian employment opportunities. And the final component of the resource is focused on career advice. So a number of self-paced tutorials walk your users through best practices for various employment activities, such as interviewing, networking, job searching, and these give them actionable advice to help improve their chances of securing employment. The Pathway U tool also provides some additional content overviews, as well as downloadable worksheets for patrons looking to further explore their personal interests as they pertain to finding fulfilling job opportunities. Career Prep is one product from a suite of resources focused on career and test prep tools. Gail Presents Peterson's Test Prep is a testing resource containing standardized test prep as well as a number of career and vocational tests. And Gail Presents Peterson's Test and Career Prep combines both test prep and career prep into a single interview. Thanks for your time today, everyone. Okay, thanks, Kristen. Um... I think we've got time for maybe a couple of questions um, from the audience. Um, let's see. Let's bring back up the other view. Um, let's see. Here's one from from Janet at Jones Library. Uh, Janet asks, uh, are all the resume templates free. Uh, she says that she gave it a try and it looked like some of the fancier templates were not free. I can help answer that. They are indeed um, free. So that's something we're, we're looking at right now, but um, every, all of the templates included are free to your patrons if you have the resource. Awesome. Uh, we had a lot of questions that came in through the Q&A chat and, and we were able to respond to a lot of those audience members directly. So um, I'm just grabbing a few that we haven't got to yet. Um, let's see. Uh, Edna at Half Hollow Hills Community Library is asking uh, which tests are included in the uh, Peterson's test prep. Yeah, it covers um, a wide range um, from both things like ACT, AP prep um, to uh, the career fields of, you know, nursing, um, teaching, social work. Um, so we can um, try to follow up Edna afterward um, and see if we can get you the full list. OK, 
Okay, here, here's another one. Um, how often are uh, Udemy courses updated? For instance, if uh, a course teaching Blender 2.7 is created, uh, will it be updated when 2.8 comes out? Uh, same thing for MS Office uh, type programs that are usually, they usually have like an annual subscription. Yeah, I replied in the chat to this one. Um, it's a point of pride for you to me that they are offering, that they're able to publish almost as soon as these new versions come out, new courses, or have their instructors update the ones that already exist. So you will be getting the freshest content as soon as it's available. <laughs> Not sh uh, shortly after the new versions come out. Okay, great. Thanks, Angela, and uh, thanks to all of our presenters. Uh, we've run out of time, uh, so we'll close things out. Um, just want to give the thanks from uh, Library Journal uh, for everyone attending today. Uh, this webcast will be archived, and you'll be able to uh, view the on-demand version of it in about 24 hours. Uh, we'll send you an email to let you know when that, uh, that recording is available. Uh, you can find this webcast and other uh, archived and upcoming webcasts and event in the uh, events and PD section at librarysjournal.com. So take care, everyone. Bye-bye.